Please be seated. Here to officially welcome you this morning are Principal Aaron Barksdale, followed by greetings from Ms. Nancy Meister, Vice Chair of the Atlanta Board of Education, Atlanta Public School Superintendent Maria, Dr. Maria Jaker Starfin, and Erica McKay, board member of Georgia Coalition of Black, Wo Black Women. Thank you, Michaela. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to our superintendent, Dr. Maria Christoffen, special guest speaker and mayor of Douglasville, the Honorable Miss Rochelle Robinson, Ms. Meister and members of our Atlanta Public School System Board of Education, our APS district staff, Siskiwala faculty and staff, families, community members, and of course, my CSK students. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to the ninth annual Shirley Clark Franklin Lecture Series featuring this year's theme, Working to Form a More Perfect Union, Honoring Women in Public Service and Government. Welcome to all of you. I wanna take a quick moment in my welcome and greeting to publicly recognize and thank a few people for coordinating this entire event. Um, I would like for them to stand and be recognized and please applaud for them. So Ms. Hope Adams, our graduation coach. <laughs> Ms. Jamie Parham, our theater teacher. <laughs> Ms. Rayoni Madison-Jones, our other graduation coach. <laughs> Ms. Alicia Lurie, who is a part of the APS communications <laughs> team. Thank you so much for coordinating. And a very, very special thank you to Ms. Tia Martin. She's our 11th and 12th grade assistant principal over there in the back. <laughs> thank you so much for Ms. Martin and the entire team for designing, coordinating, and planning this event. Thank you. So I wanna welcome all of our guests, those who have not been to, to CSK before, those who have just returning. Welcome to a space where girls can be their authentic self without reservation or boundary. Welcome to the space where girls of color express themselves artistically and academically. Welcome to a space where black and brown girls are celebrated, embraced, empowered, supported, developed, and nurtured. Siskiwala is a very special place, and this place cultivates excellence and empowerment for young women. Here, it is acceptable and expected to be a girl. It is accepted and expectable, expected to believe that you can transform the world. And it is expected and accepted to be yourself, flaws and all. And we accept and expect you to try, fail, succeed, endure, and persist here. And this space was specifically designed for you girls to shine. I wanna welcome you all to the Coretta Scott King Young Women's Leadership Academy, where every girl has a dream with her name on it, and we welcome you to our event. Thank you. Good morning. I'm glad to start my day here at Siskiwala. As a board member, the best part of our job is the time we actually get to spend among the students in the Atlanta Public Schools. Um, at this time, I'd also like to recognize a colleague of mine that just came in, Ms. Leslie Grant, um, and Ishay Collins, I didn't see you walk in either, colleagues on the Atlanta Board of Education. I don't think anyone else, it's pretty dark out there, so I can't see, but okay. Um, we, my colleagues and I, are especially delighted to be a part of the ninth annual Shirley Clark Franklin Lecture Series. The Atlanta Board of Education developed and sponsored this lecture so our students and communities could leverage the wisdom and experience of Mayor Franklin, Coretta Scott King, and other female leaders for the better benefit and betterment of future generations. To the students here today, I hope you appreciate and that you are, that you are in the presence of great women, women who have demonstrated the courage and bravery to step up and make a real necessary difference in our community, our city, our state, and our nation. We have, of course, Mayor Franklin herself, who broke through gender barriers to become our city's first female mayor and showed herself to be a determined steward for our city. By tackling an immense sewer issue, launching the Next Steps program to help prepare students for college and career and other great tasks, 
Mayor Franklin didn't seek glory or credit. She only sought to compete, to complete the work she had in hand and set the stage for future mayors. Today she is chair and sought to complete, uh, today she is chair and CEO of both purpose-built communities and the Barbara Jordan Visiting Prof Professor in Ethics and Political Values at the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas in Austin. I am also thrilled to be with Dr. Maria Kostarfin, our superintendent, your new principal, Erin Barksdale, and I am excited to hear from Douglasville Mayor Rochelle Robinson. I want to invite you, no, I want to challenge you to really listen today and to take note of the lessons and the stories that you hear, and not only incorporate them into your own life, but into your own dreams, so that maybe one day you can be the example of the one making the difference. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I bring greetings on behalf of Rita Samuels Jackson, as well as the Georgia Coalition of Black Women. And I'm excited. Each year, we have the opportunity to come and see each and every one of you, how you're matriculating in your journey. And I'm reminded of the words of the late, great Coretta Scott King, who said, when the mind is right, when the heart is right, the body and mind will follow. And I want you to think about that because it's important every day to do a heart check and to ask yourself, is what I'm doing going to be beneficial for me as well as for those around you, for your family, for those that you have yet to meet in the community? Have a heart check and always do what's right. I want you to know that we salute you here at the Georgia Coalition of Black Women for your past accomplishments, your present accomplishments, and we're so excited about what your future holds. And as you unleash your greatness with the world, we can't wait to see all that you have to share. Thank you. Well, good morning, ladies. How are you doing? Oh, is it that tough? Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. So really, how are you doing? Good. You're doing well? Yeah? All right, great. Okay, so again, my name is Maria Karstarfen. I'm your sort of new superintendent. I was with you last year. Raise your hand if you remember me from last year. Okay, good. All right, so you must be in what grade? You're not sure? <laughs> All right, so if you are, and we're going to play a quick game so I can see who's in this room. If this is a true statement about you, stand up and say, that's me. I am in the 12th grade. That's me. That's me. Stand up and say, that's me. That's my seniors. All right. Graduating 100%. If I am in the 11th grade. That's me. Okay. I am a sophomore in the 10th grade. That's me. All right, they're in the house and all our little babies. If you're a freshman in the ninth grade, stand up and outdo the seniors with That's Me. Ninth grade? They're still, oh, they're still so shy. Okay, seniors, before you graduate this year, you gotta get them a little more, you know, confident. All right, so good morning. I'm so excited to see you. Um, I know, I love, I love your principal. I want you to know, I worked so hard to recruit her to come here and be your principal. Could you, she really wants this to be a place that shines for girls. Could you give her some shine? Let's give her some shine. All right. Yes, bask in the glow because we love you. We love you. And in naming and just speaking of people that we love, I love you as students. I know that our board members do too. Um, our, like the majority of the women on our board are actually here today. And I want to give them a big round of applause for like holding up the front for the women in leadership. And I also, like everyone else, want to recognize Coretta Scott King and Shirley Franklin, who are just great role models for all of us. Um, I'm from Selma, Alabama, you know, which is where the heart of the voting rights movement took place. I graduated from our local high school there. Um, it wasn't an all-girls school, but when I went to college, I did go to Newcomb College, which was kind of tailored to young women in college. And so I know what it means to have 
an education like this. And I hope, I mean, I kept saying to myself when I was in college, why didn't I go to all-girls school? Because it just gives you a chance to kind of develop and grow into who you are with the kind of space and love that your principal described. It is really tough being a minority and a woman, not only in the workplace, but in this world. And I am telling you, the network and the connections that you're making right now, never let go of them. Ninth graders, I mean it. Like, really get your sisterhood down and carry it with you in every grade level. So when you graduate and you go to college and maybe your posse can't go with you because you're all going to be going in different places, but that you stay connected. They say those people who maintain their high school friendships tend to be healthier, happier, and more engaged when they're in college. So don't forget all the young women and peers that you know today that you can take with you for support when you're off in school. I'll also say that you know, Shirley Franklin and um, Coretta Scott King did amazing things. Yes, they did, as individuals. And I don't believe for one second that women would have the right to vote. Women in the Deep South would be where they are today without the work of Coretta Scott King supporting her husband, Martin Luther King, and also doing her own work to lift women all over this country. Um, and I think she does deserve a round of applause for that. <laughs> And it is true, like our Vice Chair Meister said a few moments ago, that Shirley Franklin broke all sorts of barriers for women all over the country. And while I may not have all my facts right, I do believe she was the first black woman mayor. I cannot remember the date, but she, and so this is extraordinary. And of course, being the mayor of such a great city, like a gateway city, like Atlanta, is uh, pretty extraordinary. And so all these people before you are just, blazing a path, leaving a wide, wide space for you to kind of walk through. Some of you will run through. Some of you will be high-fiving through. But I think you need to find your pace and get down that path. Take every chance. They don't mind. I am telling you, they don't mind. Stand on their shoulders no matter how much weight you're bringing with you, right? And get the lift that you need to be able to grab those things your heart and your mind most desire. I stand before you today as the superintendent of Atlanta Public Schools, and no matter what happened in our past, I am very proud to be standing here today and being right here next to an extraordinary principal who loves children but cares enough about you to take effective action to change outcomes in your lives. When those things happen, when people love you from here but then put their backs into it to do the work that's necessary, there is no stopping our young people in Atlanta. I commit to you to keep doing that for our freshmen and to support you. As you know, seniors, as you know, you could be going to college with a full ride if you are applying for Achieve Atlanta scholarships. They've been supporting you this year. They will support you through college and make sure that you have that network that you need to finish on time and go ahead and get into the workforce. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's not every hand. So I want you to commit to me right now. Say, I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. Okay, now I'm going to make another statement, and then you're going to say, that's me, because it's true. I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. You're not standing up. I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. You're not standing up. I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. Where are my juniors, sophomores, and freshmen? You can't, don't wait to think about college. Are you ready? I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. I'm going to keep doing it to all of you stand up and get your free ride to college. Scholarships, support in school, love and care from the time you were a freshman in high school till you graduate from college. I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. That's me. She's not standing. I will make contact with Achieve Atlanta. That's me. Thank you for standing. I love you ladies, just know that we support you, and yes, we'll be this relentless to ensure that you have all the support you need to graduate on time, go on to college and careers that you love and lives that you can't wait to live. Mwah! Have a great school year.
Now we will hear from Jasmine Mitchell, an eighth grade student who will bring the occasion. National Women's History Month, celebrated annually during the month of March, provides an opportunity to educate the public about the significant role of women in America's history. This year's theme presents the opportunity to form a more perfect union while honoring women who have shaped America's history and its future through their public service and government leadership. Collectively, women have dramatically influenced our public policy and the building of viable institutions and organizations. From championing basic human rights to ensuring access and equal opportunity for all Americans. They have led the way in establishing a stronger and more democratic country. The diversity of the public leaders' experiences demonstrate both the challenges and opportunities in public service have faced. Their ability to use the art of collaboration to create inclusive solutions and nonpartisan policies, as well as their skill and determination, serve to inspire future generations. This is the 36th anniversary of the Women's History Movement and the National Women's History Project. We are proud that after decades of dedicated research and technological advances, the stories of American women from all cultures and classes are accessible and visible as never before. Numerous scholars and activists helped shape the Women's History Movement. Susan B. Anthony, Mary McLeod Bethune, Elizabeth Candy Stanton, Ivy Wells, Diane Nash, Annie Lee Cooper, and our own namesake, Coretta Scott King. The Shirley Clark Franklin Lecture Series, which began in 2008 as a vision of Rita Samuels and the Georgia Coalition of Black Women, has been fortunate to have notable and powerful speakers who have made their own history, who made their own mark in history. These women include Mayor Shirley Clark Franklin, who keynoted the inaugural lecture. Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, President Emerita of Spelman College, Ooh. Elizabeth Omolami, actor and executive director of Hosea Feed the Hungry, and Gwendolyn Keyes Flemings, Chief of Staff for Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Today we are pleased to add the Honorable Rochelle Robertson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, to this distinguished list of lectures. Thank you, Jasmine. At this time, we will hear a poetry selection by Kajara Harris, titled, She. She. You see, when they told me I had to write a poem about a woman in service, a woman in politics, I thought to myself, I said, do they want the lies and fairy tales or do they want reality? The reality of my future. The reality that me and my sisters will have to hide our self-made courage because courage does not belong to us. We, yes, us women. You do not belong in a man's office, they say. And just go have kids, they say. Go keep the population booming, they say. And you are nothing without a man, they scream. But before I can speak, my vocal cords will be ripped out of my throat by a man's hand. Because when I am silenced, there is no danger. The danger of my voice, our voice, yes, us, we women, we are strong. The way we can articulate Mother Nature's secrets, the way our bodies are the world's biggest mystery. And because we're made from the greatest elements and the biggest stars in the galaxy, we are Earth's greatest natural disasters. With our minds breeding beautiful ideas and our souls mothering the laws, the man they trained you to be afraid of is already afraid of your imagination. Just speak. To them, the drop of melanin in your skin is radiation. Because in society, melanated women are made of danger. Because our minds, oops, I'm sorry, our bombs are the most deadly. The way we speak of unity, the way our bodies are the world's greatest history books, the way we can spread a message with just one single word. And that's what scares the world. Society is afraid. The fear of a being with the power of a thousand men, a thousand peaceful men. And because we are women, 
By the age of 25, we would have already been objectified by 45 men and 12 women because consent is a belief. And if you don't believe in it, why practice it? Because I am a woman, I was taught to stay silent. Never show your power, I was told. But for the fear shack, we are women. We do not conform to those rules. We let our voices be heard. We take on the things that we were always told not to. Together, we make our mother nature secrets. The mothers of all lost children, caretakers of the elderly. We are magical. Yes, we, women, are magical. And she is majestic. She is immaculate. She is power. She is what, hold, she is what holds this world together. And we as women break the barriers of reality because we are the workforce. We are inventors. We are politicians. We are the industry. We are the government. We are the world. Thank you, Kajara, for such powerful words. Shattering the political glass ceiling in 2001 when she was elected Atlanta's first female mayor, Shirley Clark Franklin tackled head-on tough urban challenges facing Atlanta. She has many accomplishments, but her most dynamic accolades include laying the foundation for the $3.2 billion overhaul of Atlanta's aging water and sewer system, the Next Step program designed to engage every APS high school students in developing their own plans for life beyond high school, whether it is college or the workforce, led the efforts to raise $32 million to have the papers of Dr. Martin Luther King housed at his alma mater, Morehouse College. In 2013, Mayor Franklin was named the Barbara Jordan Visiting Professor in Ethics and Political Values at the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs, University of Texas at Austin. As professor, she shares her perspectives on women in pol politics, the challenges of urban civic leadership, and lessons learned in forging coalitions locally, nationally, and internationally, a hallmark of her eight years as mayor. Mayor Franklin could not be here with us today, but we thank her for her leadership and ongoing su supporting of Siski Walla through the lecture series. Next, we will hear from Mia Moon, a graduating senior and the class of 2016 salutatorian who will introduce our keynote speaker. The Honorable Rochelle Robinson, mayor of the city of Douglasville, grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, and attended Youngstown State University. Mayor Robinson has served the public for, for over 30 years, having worked in the city, state, and federal governments. She received an honorable discharge from the Ohio Army National Guard, where she served from 1981 to 1987, and had a commendable stint in our nation's capital working for the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, from 1987 to 1995. Since moving to Georgia, she has worked with the Clayton County, County Medical Health with from 1997 to 1999 and for the city of Douglasville as an elected official on the city council from 2002 to 2006. Making history, she became the first female and first elected African American mayor of Douglasville in 2015 and began a four-year term after being sworn in on January 5, 2016. Prior to serving as a Douglasville City Council member, Mayor Robinson served on the Douglas County Board of Elections, Douglasville Zoning Board, Board of Directors for the Douglasville Douglas County Cultural Arts Council Order, and PTA President at North Douglas Elementary. A tireless public servant and alumna of Leadership Douglas, Mayor Robinson currently serves as a member of the Board of Directors for the Douglasville Douglas County Count, County Water and Sewer Authority, Wellstar Regional Health Board, West Georgia Technical Colleges Board, the Georgia Fellowship of the Church of God Credentials Committee, and the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. An ordained minister, wife, and mother of three children, Mayor Robinson is dedicated to God, family, and country, and is committed to serving them all with undying love and support. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Rochelle Robinson, Mayor, City of Douglasville. Beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. So wonderful to be here. Such a beautiful day. And I'm excited to come and talk with you young ladies. 
I want to thank the Honorable uh, Shirley Franklin, the first African American and first female mayor of the city of Atlanta. That's awesome. Wow. For this prestigious honor and privilege to come and talk with you all. Also, I wanted to thank the Atlanta Board of Education and the APS superintendent, Dr. Maria J. Christarfin. She is so exciting. <laughs> she gets you pumped up. Such an exciting speaker and such a blessing. And um, in collaboration with the Georgia Coalition of Black Women. And of course, our principal here and the young women at the Coretta Scott King Young Women's Academy. Thank you so much for having me this morning. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you. Now this theme today that you have is working for a more perfect union. And who knows where that phrase is, has, uh, came from? Thank you, I hope someone is paying attention. That's right, it's the preamble to the United States Constitution. That theme, that sentiment, is kind of, it talks about being together, togetherness, a bond, a unity, being on one accord. And so, we haven't arrived there yet, but we're trying to form a more perfect union. And in that, as we're working to form a more perfect union, I wanna tell you girls to bloom where you are planted. And that's my theme, bloom where you're planted. And I know that you are because in your student uh, pledge it says, I will be on top of my game. I will stand out and not just fit in. I will be with the greatest, I will be the greatest influence. I will take charge of my life. I will go for the best and not settle for less. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody's trying to say it with me. You all, that's awesome. I will not take shortcuts. I will not cheat. I will, not, I will make the grade. I will take responsibility for my actions. I will lead the way. All right now, that's what I'm talking about. That is awesome. Give yourselves a hand for that pledge. A lot of people won't take that responsibility, but you are all doing that. And so bloom where you're planted. It's the springtime. And I know that, it happened on Sunday, they didn't have to put it on the calendar because my allergies started messing up. So I knew it was the springtime. But those beautiful blooms that are on the trees let us know that time is changing. And as spring is here, I want us to think today about ourselves like a tree. And as a tree, you have roots. So if you wanna bloom where you're planted, your roots is your foundation, it's your family. Those things that your family put in you, things that your mother and your father, your grandparents, or your auntie, or your older brother or sister, someone has said to you, a teacher has said to you, do the right thing. Character is doing the right thing when no one is looking. So I want you to think about your roots. What, root, or what are you really, really, really made of? I'll tell you, my roots were in the church with my mother. I hated going. For real, I don't know if you all like that, but she wanted to go on Sunday, Sunday evening service. Then she wanted to go Wednesday, then Thursday to choir rehearsal, missionary. I was like, it's too much church. So my mother said one Thursday afternoon, one Thursday evening at choir rehearsal, she said, okay, Rochelle, you can play, but stay inside the fence line of the parking lot of the church. So I was, you know how you, your parents tell you something and you listen, but you ain't really listening? Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna play. And we played freeze tag, so I was frozen, right? I was frozen. And I could see Ricky Baldry out the side of my eye. So I said, when, when I'm not frozen anymore, I'm gonna run over there and get him. And so they said, go. And I saw him run outside the parking lot. And what do you think I did? Was I supposed to run outside the parking lot? My mother told me to stay in the fence line. But I said, nah, I'm fast. I'm nine years old, he's 16. You know, he's in high school, I can catch him. So I ran outside the, the fence line and guess what happened? I got hit by a car. I did, I got hit by a car. It was a one-way street and a car came and hit me and I tried to get up and I looked down and my knee was turned around. And so the ambulance came and they put me in the hospital. I was in traction. I missed the whole fourth grade. I had to test out for the fourth grade all because I didn't listen to my mother. She said, stay within the fence line. So those roots, you know, they said she'll never walk again. She has a fractured femur. She's not going to walk again. But my roots that were put in me was faith. And I said, my mother and my parents said, we're going to pray. You can clap. And we're going to continue to trust in the Lord. 
So that family, that family encouragement, I want you to think about that and being kind to each other. I have three children. They're 13, 15, and 17. Pray my strength. <laughs> three teenagers in the house. The boy is the oldest and two girls. We have three bathrooms and they're still not enough. Everybody want to get in the bathroom. But I told them yesterday, the two teenagers, the two high schoolers, are in the International Baccalaureate program. My daughter is doing really well as a freshman. She has seven A's and a, and a B in uh, physics at 89. Now the baby told her, the 13 year old said, Olivia, you would have better time management if you got better grades if you just would manage your time better. And we said, Anna, don't talk to her like that. Be kind to your sister. Encourage her. She said, well, what's a better way to say it? Because I have all A's. <laughs> and we said, a better way to say it is, I can help you become more organized so that you won't be up until midnight trying to get a physics paper done. So I want you to remember that your roots, your family, your friends, your sisters in school, to encourage each other and be kind to each other. So as you bloom where you're planted, remember about kindness. Secondly, I'm going to talk to you about your tree trunk, your stem, if you're a flower, your stem or your tree trunk. And that is your experiences, your education, all the things that you do extracurriculars, all the things that you do outside of your house with your community, and you have to be part of the community. What stirred politics in me is when I was able to walk and was going on and I was at home getting homeschooled, my mother said, we're going to the Board of Education and we're going to march on the Board of Education. And I thought, why are we marching on the Board of Education? I'm nine years old. What am I marching for? And she said, equality in books. Now, my mother grew up in the movement, and that was the Civil Rights Movement. We had Nation of Islam in our house. We had brothers with kufis and, and uh, dashikis. We had uh, Panthers. We had everyone in our house, very eclectic. We learned a lot in the community. So my mom said, it isn't your school. It's the school across town. But whatever affects one affects all of us. So that plant, that seed was planted in me in community, giving back to the community. So we went and marched on the Board of Education for Equality and books for the people on the south side, a place where we didn't live. But I believe that that environment planted politics and community into me. And so I'm saying to you that you're responsible in this world for your community and that you should give back to your community. So as you bloom where you're planted, remember that your roots are important, your foundation, and your stem, your tree trunk, your community is important. And the last thing is when you bloom, when your fruit comes out, is what will you produce? They've been asking you since the third grade, kindergarten, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? So you have to really think about that. What do you want, what do you want to be when you grow up? The Mayor Franklin said, that's what I love about being mayor. Even if the problem is getting a cat out of the tree, <laughs> from the biggest problem to the smallest, you're in charge. No ambiguity. Be a leader. Leaders lead. Shirley Franklin. And so what she's saying there is when you are in your position, remember to be sisterly. That you have to give back to someone, just like she's given to me. I met Mayor Franklin when I was on city council, and she was the mayor in Atlanta. And she remembered me. We went to the United States Mayor's Conference in January in Washington, D.C. We met the president. She had met him before, but that was my first time. And so she was very kind. I didn't even think she remembered me, but she recommended me for this position. See, she's giving back, and that's what sisters do. So be a sister, leave a legacy, give back to each other, and help each other. You know, I'll tell you, when I was in the Army, they said, and I'm encouraging you, when you become who you are and bloom where you are and let your fr fruit show who you are, they said, girls don't go in the Army. You know, my dad was in the Army. They said, girls don't do that. I see all these cadets today, junior ROTC, woo That's what I'm talking about. When it was time for college, my dad said they have a GI Bill, and you don't have to pay back any loans. So I said, you know what? I'm going to the Army. So I signed up and went to the United States Army and did my basic in AIT at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And I said, that's going to pay for school. So I got in Youngstown State University. My parents were paying for my room and board. College tuition was paid by the GI Bill, but guess what I needed money for? Books! They didn't have everything online. So I went into the bookstore 
for a science class, one book was $85. And I said, well, I can't call my dad because he just gave me this money for my apartment and he put food in here. I saw a sign up there that said, cheerleading tryouts, free books. Guess what I did? <laughs> I tried out for cheerleading. Now, I came up in the school system and we cheered like, hey, that's how we cheered. This university cheered like, what? They have boys lifting you up in the air. Doing I said, what in the world? I didn't know what was going on, but my need superseded my fear, and I went to the cheerleading tryout, and I made it as a cheerleader. And I was the first African-American cheerleader on Youngstown State University's campus. So what I'm saying to you is don't fear what you can do. Senior time came around for graduation. They had all these booths out there, and I saw a booth that said Central Intelligence Agency. And I said, the CIA, like, born CIA, like 007? And it really was the CIA, so I applied. And they checked me out for an entire year and they asked me to join the agency. And I worked for them for eight years and traveled to different parts of the world and lived in Helsinki, Finland, and other places. I can't tell you if I tell you how to But anyway, they said, girls can't work for the CIA. So then I came to Georgia. I've been married to my husband for 20 years. He's a pastor and we have our three beautiful children. And um, I ran for city council and made it. And then I was going to run for mayor, and they said, don't do it. You know, it's never been a, a female mayor, it's only been white males. And not that it's anything about race or gender, I believe that I could do the job. So I ran in 2011, and guess what happened? I lost! Boom, boom, boom. I lost the race in 2011. I won, there were four of us in the race, I won the general, and we had a runoff because I had 49%. And in Georgia, you need 50% plus one. So we got in the runoff, and I lost by 88 votes. And everyone said, oh, wow, it's over. And I said, it's over, too, because I, really, I was really intimidated. And so I continued to work in the community, as you see all the boards I served on. And I was just quite happy with my three teenagers and my husband helping with the church. But I felt the call again in 2015, and I decided to run again. And I said, I'm not going to let what all these people say about it's never been a black woman, never been a woman since 1875. And I ran in 2015. I won the general, and I won in a runoff by 62% against the incumbent. 62%. So that's when you bloom. You let your fruit show, and in that you give back. So I want you to know to continue to do what you do, strive. You've already said it so many times in your pledge and all the things that I've read and everyone that's come up to talk to you that you are going to bloom on your planet. I look forward to great, great things from you all. That your roots are deep, that you're being kind in your community, your stem, your trunk is strong, you're giving back, and your experiences that you're gonna be who God called you to be. He put something in your heart, way, way down in your heart. Don't let anyone take it away from you. Coretta Scott King said, women, if the soul of the nation is to be saved, I believe you must become its soul. Coretta Scott King. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. Amen. Magazine. I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, and that's the same sorority that uh, Mrs. Coretta Scott King was in. And so featured for the January quarterly session is Miss Coretta Scott King and her family. And this is how the past intersects with the future. 
and you turn to the first page with the international sorority president, and I'm right there with the Supreme Basilisk. So that is like a great honor, and it just lets you know that things that you do, you still can impact, that it comes full circle. And another one of my sorority sisters was Rosa Parks. She sat down on that bus in Montgomery, Alabama, 60 years to the day that I was elected mayor in uh, December 1st, 2015. 60 years from that day, she sat down on the bus so that I could stand up in the city of Douglasville. So that's why she really sacrificed. My inspiration, yes. Shirley Franklin. <laughs> really, my, my inspiration was Shirley Fran Franklin and my mother. Um, Shirley Franklin in politics because she was the first African American female in the city of Atlanta. And my mom because my mother really inspired me to give back to the community. And I would say my grandmother, my grandparents, my mother's parents are from Mississippi, Columbus, Mississippi, and they were sharecroppers. And so they moved to Ohio and started a farm. And my grandmother prayed for us every day. And when I went to the White House, I had her coat on. And when I walked in the White House doors, I said, from the outhouse to the White House, look at me, Mama. <laughs> so those are my inspirations. My grandmother, my mom, and Ms. Shirley Frank. Some of my challenges were, she can't do it because she has a family. You know, they look at you and say, you, you can't do that because you have three kids. And so the challenge was to go beyond. Sometimes as women, we have to go above and beyond the normal, what people expect. So I had to really uh, prioritize and cook dinner at night like I do now. This morning, I, I put stuff in the crock pot before I left this morning. And so when I get home, before I get back to City Hall, I go by and check on it. So those are some of the challenges is really to manage my time and prioritize, and to break down barriers and walls, let them think what they want to think. I'm not, not worried about them. You always don't have haters, but you just do you. <laughs> my name is Lana Rose, and I'm in 11th grade. My question is, if I decide to go into politics, what should my educational background consist of? Political science is a great field of being an attorney because it's a lot of legal papers that you have to sign, ordinances, and you know, sign a lot of checks. But my major in school was history. It didn't have anything to do with politics. I just received it as a calling. But for education, your educational background, I would say political science is a nice major, or history or something in civics in that respect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Mayor Robinson. I am Ronnie Steele, excellent grad student. As an African-American woman in a high-profile high position, how are you able to support your private life from your domains of the Woo wee! Tell me the secret, girl. Why you do it? No, to do my, my personal life and my marriage life. Is that your question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's my. I have a great support system. My husband is kind of like Mr. Mom. You know, he's a pastor, but he teaches at the high school as well. He's bivocational, so he has the same schedule as the kids. It's to the high school. He's at the high school at uh, Douglas County High. He's in the special ed program and teaches math. So he takes the high schoolers to school, I take the middle schooler, and I'll run from there and get to get to City Hall, but we kind of support each other. And my husband's a Grady baby, and he went to Fulton High School in Atlanta. So he's from this area, and his whole family's from this area. My brother-in-law's a state trooper, he lives in the same county, so my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, we all help each other. So I have a great support system, and I put that to the side, and I let it be sacred. And I really say there are certain things I won't do on certain days because I need to nurture my family. Because it can take over your life if you let it. So I really have to draw a line that family is sacred. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I am Angel Walker, an 11th grade student. My question is, are you considering running for any other political offices? If so, what would they be? No, girl, I ain't trying to run for nothing else. No, I'm just kidding. I'll just see what happens. Um, when I was on city council, we celebrated and I had my baby, Anna. And so I said I was gonna come home and be with my family. But it's kind of like the mafia, they keep pulling you back in. <laughs> so um, I ran for mayor and I'll just go through this term and see what's, you know, what God will have for me in the future. But people have already said to me, you know, you need to run for state senate or representative or all these different offices. I'm just going to try to focus on what I'm doing right now and do very well at the mayor's position. 
So I don't have any future aspirations outside of making it work where I am now. <laughs> You're welcome. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. My name is Arlene Jackson. I'm also a 11th grade student here. Mm -hmm. What programs have you put in place for African-American youth who would like to go to college? Well, I've been in office 90 some days. But I support, <laughs> I support um, Youth Against Violence. I've spoken there several times. Our police chief, Gary Sparks, has implemented a program that's internationally recognized among the uh, law enforcement community, whereby he takes youth that have been mandated from the court system to go to an eight-week course with our police department. And they talk about you know, their mistakes and try to help them get back on the, the right road so they won't end up in being incarcerated. So I work with that program. I help with PTA, I was PTA president. My son's in the band booster, so I do a lot of volunteering in the band with the swim team, with my girls in gymnastics. So I haven't implemented programs per se for the city, but I'm working in conjunction with other folks that do things in the city. And I'm in the Rotary Club, and we give backpacks to kids. Every Friday we provide food for those backpacks for the kids that are low income, that may not have food at home. We put non-perishable items in their backpacks and uh, we give them food throughout the summer. When, it's, when school ends, we buy all this food and we provide it to those families for the summer. So I do that through the Rotary Club. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, my name is Jamie Lamar. I'm sophomore here at Corrida Scott King. My question is, how was your experience in the Army? I love the Army. I really should have stayed, but uh, I had to go to school. It was really, it was enjoyable. I was there for six years, and Army National Guard is like the reserves. Um, you go once a month, in two weeks, in, to once one week in a month and two weeks in the summer for your training. But you're on call if something happens. My National Guard unit were actually the guys who, unfortunately, during the Vietnam uh, protests, they went to Kent State University and they shot some of those, they killed some of those students that were protesting for the Vietnam War. So anytime there was any kind of um, emergency, state emergency, the military, the, the National Guard reserves have to be on, on call to do whatever is needed. Um, so I enjoyed my time in the military. I enjoyed the Army. The discipline was very good. I didn't really like getting up early in the morning, but it prepared me to um, really discipline my life. And those same principles have stuck with me throughout my life, being disciplined through the military. So I enjoyed it. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. My name is Rodney Sam, freshman in CSK. You're a freshman? Yes. I want to know, how does it feel to be one of the first African-Americans really look at it like that. I guess history will speak for itself. I just like to, you know, make a difference. It feels, it feels good. I'm in the midst of it, so I really don't know. Just like cheerleading, um, I'll tell you a quick story. I have a younger brother. My parents had a oops baby. He's 15 years younger than I am. 15 years. So my brother Anwa uh, went to school, and where I went to Youngstown State, he graduated with a political science degree. But he said one day he was really down and my father passed and it was his last year of college. And so he said, you know, I was walking in the hall and I felt terrible and he was on a track scholarship. He said, so I was walking in the hall and I just thought, daddy died and I'm, I just can't take it, I'm through with this. And he said, I looked up and I saw this large picture of you and it said first African American cheerleader. He said, that's my sister, I'm not giving up. And he went on to graduate. So um, I don't know what history will say but it feels like I need to make a difference, like I did not knowing that I would do that for my brother, for anyone else that could be inspired, but that helped him to stay in the school and complete college, so that's that. We'll see what, we'll see what history says. <laughs> You're right. This has been a most informative session. Please give our keynote speaker, Mayor Rochelle Robinson and fellow Siski Wallace students a round of applause. At this time, we will have special presentations. Will Mayor Robinson, Ms. Bartstow, Ms. Meister, and Dr. Christarthen please join Cadet Butler at the center of the stage. Mayor Robinson, on the behalf of the Atlanta Board of Education and Atlanta Public Schools, we would like to present to you with a commemorative poster of today's lecture series. The same poster will also be housed in the lobby here at Siskiwala. On behalf of all of our fellow Sissy Wallace students, it has been a pleasure presiding over today's program. At this time, seventh grade student Brianna Smith will come forward with closing remarks. 
I hope you all have been inspired by today's program. On behalf of Siski Walla, we would like to thank Mayor Rochelle Robinson for sharing your inspiring story of public service and commitment to serving the city of Douglasville. Mayor Shirley Clark Franklin for her historic leadership and unwavering support of our school over the years. We would also like to thank Ms. Nancy Meister and the members of the Atlanta Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Maria J. Karstoffen, Eric Covet K of the Georgia Coalition of Black Women, and last but certainly not least, our principal, Ms. Erin Barksdale, and the faculty and staff at Siskiwala for leading, educating, and empowering us every day. Thank you for joining us and have a great afternoon.